Hi everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations live on a Friday night. I'm back after a week of taking vacation to Washington just to kind of clear my head, give myself a whole new perspective on design and creativity. First vacation in 10 years, if you don't count weekends. So tonight we're gonna to be doing a blueberry inspired wreath. I got all the materials that just came in as of yesterday. So I can't wait to show you this design idea. We're gonna use our 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. The first five sections are already done for you. Um, so let's go ahead and get this one started. Um, if this is your first time joining us, please come in, let us know where you're from. I'd like to welcome you. Hopefully you'll find a crafting connection here uh, by telling people where you're located, for example, Southern California, or um, a specific city in your state, other people that are watching the live can connect with you and then you find a crafting buddy or, or a friend and that will be your lifelong friend thanks to Facebook Lives. Um, so let's go ahead and get this one going. If you like this design and you wanna replicate it once you get all the materials in, most of the materials today came from Hobby Lobby, Kringle Designs, or Craft Outlet. I think those are the top three that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, if you go to kringledesigns.us, put in the code 5050, you can get 50% off all of your craft supplies. So um, there's my plug for Kringle Designs, who um, I ordered most of my supplies for, for this design. So Dollar Tree 14 inch wreath frame, we're gonna use one pipe cleaner in between each weld, and we're gonna wire together the two innermost um, rings then we're going to come along and we're going to take our other one using that center in the weld mark, kind of find a halfway point here. We're going to wire together the two outside. Since this is in the public group, feel free to like and share. Yes, you can share away if you'd like. Hi everybody. Hi Peggy. Hi Richard. I know it's been a Hi while. All. I feel like I haven't seen you guys for like ever. So there Hi, is Sarah, Susan. Hi Anna. Yeah. All of our um, pipe cleaners for this design, 18 total, six on the inside, 12 on the outside. As we're putting in our deco mesh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the inside six. Our sign is a 10 by 10, so that's gonna take up the whole inside part of our design. And then I'll introduce you to where everything else came from as we're doing it. The deco mesh that we're doing tonight is a, it's called the blue denim burlap. Um, from Craft Outlet, we're going to be doing, um, let's see if I can find my clip, there it is. We're gonna be doing 30 inch cruffles. So we haven't done that one in a while, which means you're gonna take your 30 inch piece. Oh, we're gonna stretch that out. Take a chip clip, a clothespin, a binder clip, whatever you have handy. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll over like an inch of your mesh. You're going to do that about three times or five times, sorry. Then you're going to take your chip clip and you're going to chip clip it. Okay. Then you're going to do the same on the opposite side. One inch in. One, two, three, four, five. And then once you get it that far, you're just going to pull the rest of it by gathering it pinching it, pulling it towards you. This way you have a combination of a curl and a ruffle for this one. All right, Richard, yeah, this will take about one and a quarter. One and a half. One and a half rolls of a technique. Yeah. So this, and I'm going a little bit on the thicker side for the mesh because this mesh is a, the burlap mesh, but it's a little on the thinner side. So I want it to kind of thicken the design up. So we're gonna be doing that 18 different times all the way around the design. One, two, three, four, five. So chip clip again. Richard, I think you had a blast on vacation. I really no. did. I mean, relaxing for a couple days. So most people probably like, you're, you're doing things, you're seeing things. We, stayed in an Airbnb at a lake, at a lakeside um, in Washington. Yeah. So yeah, just a little lakeside cabin, small little cabin, and we just got away from the noise. Where we live, it is extraordinarily noisy. 
It was the one thing that I really noticed most about being on vacation is how immune you can become to the noise level of your environment. And so it was just nice to get away and just have silence. So that's what we appreciated the most. Well, it was very cool. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, so for Washington, eight day, well, we went for nine days, two days driving up, two days driving back. Um, but it rained eight out of the nine days we were there. So that was a blessing. Most people think, why would you want to go anywhere when it rains? Well, we live in the desert. We've almost lived in the desert for 20 years. Hate to even say that. Um, but it's dry, it's hot. We're back into the summer. So um, escaping to some place where there was rain was like a nice hiatus. So it was a nice break. Richard said, I'm too quiet to sleep. Oh, no, it's not. I love it when it's quiet. Yeah, when, like, I can't begin to explain how noisy it is here. We have neighbors who drive down the street with their music on, um, in their cars. Um, we Blasting have... music. Huh? Blasting music. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Kathy said, I went to Michael's today, she got 60% off spring floors. Did they have anything good? I'm, like, thinking... I'm looking for summer fall florals right now. So I'm looking for someone who has a really good deal on um, yellows, oranges, more towards like fall. You might get a little bit of it at Michael's with uh, yellow. So again, just removing the inside. And then I just tuck that little stem back. Since the blues are in between, you'll see that I like rearrange my curls so that it fills the gap and I'll show you what I mean by putting this one in so one two three four five I'll do six on that one 30 inches is a lot one two three so we'll pull those ones so I've added the inside, I have one outside, and then I'm going to take this one. It's going to kind of go a little bit sideways. So let me show you. Put two good twists in. We're going to kind of tuck those down. And what you're doing is in each section, you're looking for the gaps or the holes that can develop in between your cruffles. So you just want to make sure that everything is all laid out nice together. Sometimes it's like because there's curls, you can kind of weave the little tubes in so that you don't have the gaps. This is why for the longest time, I don't really do a, a curl base. Three. Because there's gaps. So the ruffles kind of help. But then the way you lay them also fills in the gaps. So there's that one. And now these two are a little bit closer together. So I can kind of pull this one. Let me get it in first. So these are the two that are adjoining side by side. So what I'm saying is there's a gap here between the two. And what you want to do is just pull one slightly over the other and then it eliminates that gap so that the one that goes towards the middle is going to kind of fill in the next section. So you kind of just pull the curls around. One, two, six. So yeah, it did take me one and a half rolls. So it wouldn't matter if you did 25 inch cruffles or 30 inch pieces, you're still gonna have to go into a second roll. But this one, I wanted it to look um, a little bit different. So two, three, four. And we'll 
trim that. Tuck that in, and then this is an inside one, so this is going to actually lay down on the others. We want to make sure we pull all our pipe cleaners out. Okay. And this will give it a nice blue jean, soft look. This is actually one of my favorite deco mesh or fabric mesh to work with. I always call it fabric, but it's jute. So it's kind of a combo. It's got cotton and jute fibers in it, but it's super soft. And the edges are done really nicely so they don't catch. Okay, this is gonna go that sideways one. Once we get that in, this is where we're gonna lift it up and fill that gap. There we go. Nice big soft curls. One, two, there's that one. And then Four, five, six, and then pull those towards you. With a burlap match, you're going to need to cut this with a rotary cutter because it contains those natural fibers that will not cut with a wood burning tool. There we go. And then by curling them, taking those cut edges will help prevent the deco mesh or the jute mesh from fraying. So the kind of cut edges are confined inside those curls. Okay. Pull this one around, move this over. Here's our inside. Always give them a couple extra turns just because in the past, I don't know how it's happened, but you have some that kind of come loose. So this way it just makes them assured that they are not going to come undone. And the curls won't stay tightly curled. They'll eventually kind of turn more cone shape. As you see, they kind of just start to loosen up and that's okay, that's perfectly normal. Three, four, five, six. This um, burlap mesh is actually like a two-tone. It has a light and a dark blue to it to kind of give you that faded denim look. Sure. Facebook's just getting really weird right now. Yeah. It was today too. <clears throat> Susan says it's safe to assume this will not finish the storm the screen doors. Probably not. No, it will not. 
You can already tell by the size of the curls that this will not. What shade of blue is that mesh, that Charlotte? It's blue. actually a denim blue. It's a denim blue, yeah. It's just a denim blue burlap mesh. All right, Richard says one of the blessings for living outside the city is multiple quiet. Yes. I think we've just, uh -huh. I mean, where we've lived for a very long time, it used to be very quiet, and now um, things are changing. Um, because where we live at the time was so inexpensive, um, most people didn't come up here because nobody wants to live in the desert. And so housing was inexpensive. But now, because housing is inexpensive, everyone's moving here. And it's just gotten super noisy. Chris is with so many ties on the outside, what they spaced that. Well, it's 12 ties on the outside. Mm -hmm. They're spaced about probably three inches apart. Yep, exactly. Two to, yeah. It just depends. So the easiest way to do it is one goes in the center of the section and then the other two go between the middle and your weld. So it goes right in the middle. So it's literally, right. you know, two and a half, three inches on each. Carrie. The first time live, so I'm from South Carolina. I was watching the wreath with the magnolia sign this morning. Oh, so okay. I don't, don't know where to get the ribbon. I found the mesh. Thanks. Um, let's see. The magnolia ribbon. You can try Craft Outlet. That's always my like first source to go to, just because you can qualify for really low shipping, and then get your order shipped for free, which is always good. Um, or if you're in a pinch and you just can't find it anywhere. You could always go to Fifth Street Studios, which is on their own website, or where else? Um, or you can look on Etsy. Yeah, but normally, like Craft Outlet doesn't have it if it's like elusive and hard to find. Like it was for the longest time, uh, difficult to find Magnolia ribbon. Um, they generally won't have that um hard to find stuff mm -hmm. like i said my go-to source craft outlet craft outlet doesn't have it um the yeah there's so many different yeah. places matter of fact if you want i have an ebook that i have i think about 41 uh, retailers in the book, as well as I think it's about 11 wholesale accounts of places that like I have used faithfully um, over the almost five years I've been doing this. So it's basically my little cheat sheet of where I've gone to get um, items, not including Joanne's Hobby Lobby Michaels. Those are just your like, everybody would assume that but just other places you can shop or places you didn't even think. And then um, the nice thing about the ebook is if you leave it on your um, computer, you can actually click the links to the shop from the actual ebook and I'll just take you right to the website and um, you can start shopping. Mm -hmm. um, I also list, you know, what shops have minimum qualifying in order to get free shipping. So I've kind of taken all the guesswork out of it for you. But um, you can purchase that. It's on my website. I think Steve's going to pin it. It's just calcifrationsandmore.com. Yeah, I'll, pin it. I'll go find it and pin it. Uh, Sylvia, the mesh on this, all 18 pieces are cut to 30 inches. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit longer than normal. Well, to do cruffles, it either yeah. has to be 30 or 25, 25. Yeah. Um, because this, like when you roll it out, it's a nice blue like this, but then when you roll it out, it's a very thin blue. So I wanted to kind of keep mm -hmm. that color blue that you see on the roll. So that's why I did these ones at 30 pieces, 30 inch pieces. Oh, awesome, Richard. You said he's going to do his first live on 
Wednesday, June uh, 22nd, 5 Eastern time. You'll have to like message me so I can add it to my calendar. What are you going to make? Or what are you going to do? Okay, last piece going in. So this is going to squeeze in here. Give it some really good tight twists. Make sure everything is just situated so that, you know, we have tubes going every which way, but they fill up the gap. Um, and so this is what you're left with for your design. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some, cause we remember we removed the six from the inside. So we just have 12 pipe cleaners to the outside cause our sign is gonna sit right in the center. Um, we are, find it, are using two different color, two and a half inch um, ribbon. Both of the two and a half inch are cut to 14 inch pieces. Um, the blue, white, and black is from Craft Outlet. And then the blue and white plaid also is from Craft Outlet. So again, both cut to 14 inch pieces. We're gonna alternate these all the way around. And they're all dovetail cut already. So we just fold them in half to find the midway point. We're gonna go ahead and add one to the outside of each. And then this is also going to thicken up those areas in between. Grab one of these. And right in the center. And then you can decide whichever one you wanna see lay on top of the other. I'm gonna do the blue, the white, and the black. I was gonna do the wreath with the lantern in the middle. You put the lantern in the middle. Wow. I don't think I've ever done that. I've done ones with candles in the middle. That will be fun to watch. Okay. So out. Making sure that one stays on top. For those of you looking for wreath kits, I have restocked the website with holiday kits, um, summer kits, there's some patriotic kits. We added Christmas today. I think I added nine today and seven already out of stock. So um, I had to stop for the live and then um, I ran out of boxes. <laughs> so. The box has just arrived, so we'll be stocking more. Susan, all the all the part numbers and the item numbers will be for the private group. That's always listed in the private group. And if you which you're in, so who Barbara Susan Susan That's, yeah yeah all it get those. Um, That's a big benefit of the private group. They get all the material lists of all the wreaths you make. And we opened up the private group again too. So not only is the Wreath of the Month group open, this is the first time we've had any of them open simultaneously, but the Wreath of the Month group is just one design a month. And if you want more, um, like discounts on your supplies or like what Susan was saying, the detailed materials list that have the item numbers featured, lengths of everything featured, um, where it all came from, those are all available as a private group member benefit. And there's usually, you usually can get to them about a day later. So uh, well, yes, is the ribbon still cut at 14 and 19? Yes, today it's 14 inches for the tails and then 19 inches for the half bows. I had contemplated um, doing double bows on this, but um, because I want to add some embellishments, I just left them at the half bow length 
of 19 inches for the inch and a half ribbon. Okay. Back out here. So used to having really stiff pipe cleaners, but sometimes when you go for those in-between colors, you get the softer ones that are kind of more bendable than the others. So what's the weather like where you guys are all at? Now that I think most of the kids are out for the summer, we're coming up on the hottest day of the year. or longest day of the year, I should say. Okay, two more and then we'll add our inch and a half in. Well, I from Charles, she said, I'm so excited that I was asked by a museum store. I guess locally to do a hand painted postcard. I'm finally going to get my art out there. Pray it goes well. You're gonna do really well. It's gonna do very, very well. It's always hard putting ourselves out there creative, creatively because yeah. as a creator, um, it's kind of like putting a piece of yourself out there. It's either going to be accepted or rejected, mm -hmm. and some people would just rather not. Um, and then it's a huge risk. Yeah, it's a hot 100 degree in Dallas today. Okay. It's right around 100 here. Well, I think we had 106 today. Oh, yeah, I know. That's probably why you felt it both times you came in. You were like, I'm so done. Yeah. So you said the worst part of our vacation was that I took him on vacation to show him other climates that exist yeah. outside of our desert. Um, okay, yeah. so we have blue and white. This is a royal blue Swiss dot. This is from, um, let me make sure, from Crankle Designs. And then the blueberry print on the black and white gingham is also from Crinkle. These were the two that I was waiting on to get to um, go with the sign. So we're going to take, um, let me look, how do I wanna do this? I think I'm gonna take the blue Swiss dot and it's gonna go on our blue, black, and white. So we're just taking the tails, bring the edges together you're going to go up about two inches and then kind of pinch in. That is getting laid right inside our polka dot and stripe. She said Memphis, Indiana, it's been in the 70s. Had some rain, but next week it's going to be up in the 90s. I think that's Reset. a fish. Yeah, Reset up in Ohio, 70s here, but same thing. It's going to be hit 90s next week. Yeah, my summer is officially here. Audrey, uh, we actually kind of drove, kind of by, by you. Where? Um, Audrey's up there, I believe, by Tualatin or North of Oregon. So when we were on vacation, we drove all the way up to Washington on the 5. So I think we were pretty close. Something like that. Okay, so once these go in, let me show you. I'm going to do it on the blue. So you're going to open up your loop. It's going to go in like this. This right where I have my fingers pinched is where the pipe cleaner is going to go. Then you're going to take and you're going to flip the other side and you're going to fan those out. And then that becomes like a 3D awareness bow. And it just kind of fills the gap where your um, two and a half inch ribbon goes. And then we're snipping these off taking the little end that goes behind your loop. So you open it. There we go. Right side. Yeah, I was like- blue burlap mesh, like she said, is denim color from Craft Outlet. Mm -hmm. So that it goes just like this. This is the look you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Especially with the sun. Mm -hmm. Under. See, my tablet still hasn't connected. Really? Mm -hmm. It's just sitting there spinning. It's weird. 
and he says it's 102 here in Sacramento. Go right by Sacramento. <laughs> yes, we drive right through Sacramento, right? Yep. There we go. Okay. Yep, right through Sacramento, straight up the five, the whole way there. Well, except down in the California portion, we took the 99 because the five is just really horrible if you've never driven the five through from Bakersfield all the way to like Sacramento. It's just dirt yeah. and cattle Farm. farms, mm, yeah. and that's it. That's actually where the five splits is right there in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Five over to the 99. Yeah. That's a hi from Connecticut. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining hi, us. Yeah, was joining us on Friday. Thanks for sharing your day. Absolutely. I'm excited to see what this will look like when it's finished. That's always... The best part of the design process is what does it look like when it's finished? That was a little low. Three, Charles said, Wow, funny you're doing blueberries. I was picking blueberries today. They just sound so good on a really hot summer day. I mean, blueberries are my favorite on cold days, like to put in blueberry muffins or blueberry pancakes, but. Yeah, blueberries and ice cream just sounds perfect for this so Charlotte, weather. What city and state are you in? You are. There we go. So I can actually. I see Kath Carrie says she can't wait either. It looks great now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you put the sign on and then. You add your embellishments and your bow. It's just, I'm hoping it feels nice and fresh and cool. Do I see your Facebook out of the box? Um, I had to go out and go back in. Okay. Yep. So I always make sure that you can still see both bows by making sure that when you're opening your inch and a half half bows, you pull the two and a half inch ribbon to the center so that you can see both colors. Uh, she says she's planning on making blueberry pancakes. She's in Georgetown, Louisiana. Okay. See, that sounds perfect. I bet they're going to taste amazing. I've had this sign for a while, so it's just been, for the longest time, they didn't have blueberry ribbon. And then I saw that um, they had made this one, and I thought it looked really nice with the black. It's kind of like, you know, something to set it apart. Um, we are on blue. Since I went halfway around, I had to finish up and then skip over the two I already done. Let's open this up. Okay, I have a couple more. One, two, get four. Yep. And then um, we're doing a little different on the bow. We're going back to all one and a half, or yeah, inch and a half ribbon. Uh, for the bow. So I'm not going to incorporate the two and a half inch in the bow because we have the cruffles. So I'm going to go smaller diameter. I've been favoring that lately just because it looks nice when you have a big sign to have, you know, you don't want to have big bow, big sign. I like it to be, um, you've got to have, figure out where your focal point is. So my focal point for this wreath is the sign. 
So I don't want to add anything that's going to take away from where the eye is drawn. Do any of you have any plans for a vacation? Are you staying at home? That was another thing for us. We didn't want to stay at home because mm -hmm. in the desert, there's nothing to do outside. Yeah. We do what's called summer hibernate, yeah. which means we stay inside until the temperatures cool down. Then we go outside. Unfortunately. Carol also said with her husband and son made some blueberry jelly yesterday. It was amazing. Nice. I always wanted to learn how to make jelly jams, <laughs> preserved fruit, veggies. So sometimes it's difficult to get one of those to just, if you have a pretty thick ribbon, it likes to just stay folded. So here's our last one. There's no cats in here, so when I go to attach the sign, they're not going to run away. Nope, they're all gone. They're probably hibernating too. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one. I love this Swiss dot. And believe it or not, this ribbon, it, um, when I bought it, Crinkle was having their 60% off sale. So I really stocked up on ribbon. But now it's just 50% off, so it's still a really good deal. Okay, let's get our bow going. So I'm going to set this aside. Pull out all of my ribbon that we're using on our bow. So we have the two that we're using now, the blueberry and the blue and white Swiss dot. We're also doing a blue and white plaid, also from Craft Outlet, a blue and white gingham. This is from Craft Outlet. Um, I call this just the blue plaid Craft Outlet. And then we're also going to not forget to incorporate solids. So let's put all these together and see how we like everything to go. I want to separate the gingham from each other. I think I'm going to do like, do I want to do it like that? Blue plaid, blue plaid, gingham, gingham. Probably just like that. Yeah, so that's how they're going to go. I usually take a few moments just to kind of figure out the order I want my ribbon to come to on the bow. So we're using all inch and a half. And we're going to do the same standard bow formula, which is starting with a 10 inch tail and a five and a half inch loop for the first one. I'm using the bow dabra. So now this is your bow class. So you're going to start at 10 inches. You're going to gather and then twist. So right side fabric facing up to start, wrong side here. As we spin it around, we're gonna bring this up and it's always gonna be about making sure our ribbon is measured correctly. So right there's five and a half inches for my loop. I'm gonna do it on the other side, just verify. There we go. And then back out to 10 inches. And we're gonna dovetail, which simply means fold your wired edges together and you're gonna cut from the fold to the wired point. And that gives you a dovetail look, which is how you get really nice looking ribbons or finishes on all of your ribbons. And then, we're going to go with the solid blue and usually I buy my solids in 50 or 100 yard spools so they last a long time 
and these were from Kringle. But solids generally sell out very quick, but they're always like a must have to have in your resupplies because they go with everything. So this one's gonna be nine and a half inches in and a five inch loop. So we're coming down a half inch. Bring that in a little bit. Let me get it to pull out. Let's see, are we at five? Yes. And then back out, nine and a half, and dovetail. Just like that. So for the longest time when I started, I was always about buying all the pretty patterns. But you sometimes forget how nice just adding a simple solid um, is to your bow, you know, you can come in and add a light blue to this. You could have added a black. It would accent all really nice. The next one is going to be nine inches. Pinch in. And the loop size on this one is going to be four and a half inches. So right at four and a half. Up and over. Four and a half. And then back out to nine. And I use um, one inch straight pins with the colored bowls on the end just to secure the ribbon rather than using rubber bands because rubber bands will put a crease down the center. So the straight pins are a nice um, way to keep the loose tail secure till you use it again. Okay. The gingham is going to be eight and a half inches, and this one's also going to be a four and a half inch loop. So eight and a half, and then back out to nine. And because we've already measured the blue plaid, if you just put your fingers in both and give it a pull, then you've got both of your loop size exact same. And then now all we need to do is measure out our eight and a half. Just like so. Okay, there's that one. So what about the sharp edges? Sharp edges. You don't have to worry about it. On what? <clears throat> Just on the cups when you're doing the dovetails. Um, sometimes you get that little wire that sticks out. I just trim the wire edge off. Mm -hmm. So this one is now going to be eight inches. It's kind of tying in our inch and a half ribbon. This is going to be four inch loop. So I'm trying to figure out how to make a watermelon wreath that is shaped like a watermelon. Mm. Richard said the same thing. You take a dollar for each and you cut it in half. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people, if you just go to YouTube and type in um, watermelon uh, wreath tutorials on YouTube, yep. you can generally find somebody's already done it. Or we'll Google it. Yep. Yeah. Usually YouTube for everything. Here's this one, and then our last one is our blueberry. 
Which is once in a while, Bella Tree sells half frames. I've never seen a half frame on the table. I've never seen a half frame either, but I don't go to Dollar Tree very often. Even if we do, we just buy and tuck up on like 24 of them and then. Yeah. After a while. Well, sometimes it gets hard to find the frame, so I just find ordering online is so much easier than trying to go through multiple stores. You have found some cheap stuff there at Dollar Tree. I mm -hmm. Dollar Tree's changing quite a bit with their um, inventory, what they carry. So this last one is uh, seven and a half inch is your tail length, and then three and a half inch is your loop length. A little bit shorter, and then we're right here. Seven and a half. And this is just a formula that works for me because I pretty much know roughly how big the bow is going to be size-wise. But you can, you know, change this. You could go just the blueberry and the Swiss dot and do all the ribbon lengths all the way through with just two ribbon. Um, the pipe cleaner. So we're gonna go ahead and lift these all up. They're all nice stacked layers, which makes it super easy. I prefer a pipe cleaner. You can use a zip tie. You can use floral wire. As you get older, you start to notice that your hand strength starts to leave you. Mm -hmm. So having something that has some grip to it just makes it much easier. And the color hides everything. So this is my flat board. This is a 24 by 24 by one inch, just with an inch and a half or two inch C hook at it. And then what it does is it just holds my ribbon and keeps it from sliding. I need a fairly big surface on my bows to fluff them. So in this case, I'm just separating a loop from a tail and I start at the bottom. And then I go over to the other side and go opposite. So I'm gonna go tail and then loop so that when you look down, you have your loops opposite and your tails opposite. And then you're just gonna keep bringing down the next consecutive set. So now I'm doing loop and tail. Over to the other side, here's my tail, here's my loop. So what you're doing is you're alternating your loops and your tail colors each time you bring a new stack of colors down and you can change those up at any point you know if you decide you want gingham to go on the opposite side even though you just did it here just remember that whatever you do on one side you do the opposite on the other side okay there's that which I just did again. Let's do it this way. And up here and here, and then our blueberry, here and there, and here and there. So technically everything's flat. So um, all it's done is separated tails from loops and everything is staggered. And then you just pick up the top two and you lift those up. This is how you fluff. Lift those up. You can do the tails at the same time if you want. You can just pretend that your fingers are like scissors back in that day and just put the curls back in them. Then I'm going to go ahead and lift up the next two. Mm -hmm. Oop. Separate those where I want them to fall. Same on the other side. I can get, you can pull on them pretty good. And then the last two. And then as you're sitting and looking down, you decide what you want where. Like, do you want the blue, you know, the solid blue to wind up between the two, or how do you want them all to lay? Move 
get all these pulled. And then if you want to adjust your ribbon lengths, you can intermix them with your loops if you'd like. It's up to you. I just like um, knowing where all my tails are so that I can work them around the sign. And there is your bow. Super simple. Yep. Don't get frustrated if you're a new wreath maker. It takes a while. Just keep practicing. You will get there. One day, all of a sudden, you'll just make a bow, and it'll be like the perfect bow, and from that point on, you know how to make a bow. So don't give up. Best tips are get a fluff board so that you can keep it steady while you're pulling things around. Um, make sure your measurements are precise, just like a good recipe. And then um, pick a bow maker of your choice. It just makes the whole process of holding it all together so much easier. Okay, pull this back over. Richard said your bows are so unbelievably wonderful. Oh, thank you. Richard also just made a great idea. What's that? That I think he's done before. He said he takes the square frames from Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. And he cuts them on the diagonal, so he cuts a corner of it out, and uses that as a corner swag to put florals on. Oh, yeah. And decorate. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I would think that one half, though, would probably be... One half would be wasted, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got to secure the ends so the ends don't go... That's only a buck. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, Thank you for that tip. That's very true. Okay, I'm going to so go ahead and remove... Great idea, Richard. I'm going to remove the twine from the back. I'm just going to cut those off. And then we're going to secure that with a pipe cleaner and a staple gun. So as long as your sign is a quarter inch thick or more, and you're using quarter inch staples, um, you should not have it go through the sign. And then I'm gonna give a little twist so my pipe cleaner doesn't pull through. Do the same on the other side. ergonomic staple gun it's it used to be a black and decker but now it's just called the power shot you can find it on amazon lowe's used to carry it back in the day so much nicer oh richard said that'll be a second one he said nope you actually you can use like a pipe cleaner cut the pipe cleaner and then kind of just use that glue to close the end on the other right? gotcha so Okay, so I'm going to take some of my coils, I'm going to lift some of them up so that they will border. They will border my sign. So basically it's going to lay on the interior ones. So I'm just pulling these out so I can get my, my sign in there. So let me pull. I'm just Moving these out of the way, moving these around, push, push, there we go. Nice and situated so I have like little curl tubes mm -hmm. going all the way around. And then these are just going to go right into my frame. down into my frame there we go so there's one push you over that way secure it down nice and tight go over to the other side to fix this one grab my little tubes There's my inside, inside, outside. Okay, let's get this one in. 
and then we'll fix everything once we get the sign in. It's a fairly big sign. It's a 10 by 10, right? Yeah, it's a 10 by 10. So now I'm just going to re-fluff my tails around the outside if I had to readjust them at all. You. There we go. Around. There we go. There's that one. Okay. So now our blueberries set. So now we got to put on our bow, which is going to go up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to push my curls under. If I don't, it's going to push my ribbon up higher than I need it to go. Um, I might push this one curl so I can get half of it in. Jamie, yeah, the mesh is called the uh, denim blue. You want to crop that red? And then I'm going to take my tails, make sure my tails are all facing the same direction. I'm going to place that right about here. Let's go ahead and get my pipe cleaner down. Just like that. Charlie, one thing though about living in Louisiana in that area, there's a lot of people have storm doors, right? Just you can include like a wreath hanger, so they can actually hang it on the outside of their outside door. For the summer, yeah. For the summer, yeah. Or you can take this whole design, you can make this work for a storm door. Yeah. It doesn't you just would do a the pancake method With for no this. Bow. You could still do a bow. Small It'd just be a different bow. So I'm going to bring my loops so they're in the center. My tails are all splayed out, just like so. It depends on what you want to see or not see on your sign. It's up to you. As a designer, I usually just like it to say blueberries. If you want to make sure every single word matches, you would probably split your long ones like this. Here's my two long, and then just rearrange your shorter ones like so. Let me flip this around. This one curl is being a bit problematic, so I'm going to tuck him down so we can move our loops where I want my loops to be. And then re arc. I want you in the center. Go. Okay, so let me add a couple. I have a bunch of blueberries right here. I'm just going to remove it off of this stem. There's that. Let's see, where would we like to add our blueberries? Probably up at the top. I like the way that looks. A nice embellishment. Um, 
going to break this back apart. We'll add some of those into our bow. So I'm going to go ahead and add this with the blue bin. Move these off so you can actually see what I'm doing. There's the babies. So glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue, hot glue. And I'll show you what we've done. Just a second. I'm gonna add this little baby bunch to the inside of my bow. So we have blueberries pretty much everywhere. Um, look, I want to add these blue florals. Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes it just requires a bit of finesse so I can get them where I want them to be. Richard, uh, yeah, Kat has a really good pair of stem cutters to use. Mm hmm Trying to build up my hand strength right now. He said Danny has a really good pair. I think he used those pair. The one you found was Mizuno's are the best. Right? Well, no, we found those on Amazon. Yeah. I have a regular stem cutter, though. Yeah. Um, that I enjoy doing if I'm going to cut a lot off. You know, if I'm going to be trimming up an entire something, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to add those blue florals. So same thing. I'm going, the um, florals are from Hobby Lobby. Just going to kind of tuck this into my mesh just to kind of soften the corners of that board a bit. Right. Yeah, as long as you're keeping your cost down, Charlotte. She says, I have to always watch my cost and supplies being from a small town. Most yes. I've been able to sell wreaths for is $60. That's a really good price point, though. If it's locally, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, because your clients can pick them up. Right. Um, the people where I'm at, they would not be fine with paying anything. Well, I think the high end yeah. might be... 50, like in our neighborhood. Our community would say, well, I can just pick one up at Walmart. Right. And that's fine. I mean, you can definitely do that. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to get this one off. I'm taking my little leaves off of my florals so I can have some greenery right here. Under the edge, just so we have some greenery. Oh, this looks pretty. So we have blues, greens, blacks, and white is the color palette for this one. Who would have ever thought black on a blueberry wreath before? But it works. So let me show you what it looks like. This is your standard 36 inch door. Move this over here. A little too long to put it on the counter. And this is what it would look like on your front door. So, picture taking purposes, always make sure your glue threads are gone, your ribbon tails are precise, they're not um, folded. Everything just has a nice lay to it. You, know, you want to see all those colors coming out in everything that you've laid. Still pulling glue threads. Usually this is what I'm doing outside before I do my video. Just like that. So you just want to make sure it's all nice and pretty before you take your photos. There we go. 
and make sure it paints straight. But that's it. That's our blueberry wreath. I can't wait. It looks great on a white door. I can't wait to see what it looks like on our blue door. Um, that's all I have for you guys for today. Uh, look for an announcement coming Monday. There is something new we're going to try starting next week um, and see how that goes. Again, wreath kits are available. I've put them all together. Each wreath kit is exclusively designed, which means no two kits will ever be exactly the same. Um, and it comes with everything you need, just like you've watched me put together a wreath here, exactly like that in the kit. Um, if you combine the kits, um, obviously you save on shipping. The more kits you purchase, then the more your shipping costs come way down. And then that gets refunded once your purchase goes through and I can see how much everything weighs and then bring your shipping costs down and refund you the difference. Um, other than that, I will see you guys Sunday at 6 p.m., which is Pacific time, meaning that it's 8 Central and 9 Eastern time. We go late on Sundays. So I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Thank you for joining me again. And for those of you that are watching this on a replay, thank you again for joining me. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye for now.